Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be talking about UB maps. What are they? Why do we need them? And how can we make them very, very nicely? Well, here we go. This is the model that we're going to be working with today. And this is a very, very like important part of the 3D process. Once we finish modeling, once we finish sculpting, if we want to bring our elements into the texturing department, we need to create something called a UB map. Let me go to uh, my normal mode right now. And uh, this is the model that we have. So after we've successfully modeled a, a nice low poly object such as this one for our games, for instance, we need to create something called a UB map. A UB map is a 2D representation of a 3D object. So literally, like the name implies, it's a map. It's a map that tells the texture software such as Photoshop or Substance Painter what part of the UB map corresponds to a part of the 3D model. And the way we do this is we use the UB editor, in this case inside of Maya, to generate this sort of elements. You can also do this in other software, ZBrush, Blender, 3D Studio Max, like you can do them everywhere. And this is the UB map that I was able to create for this object. Once you have your UB map, you can go into other softwares such as Substance Painter, and as you can see, work with all of the different layers and all of the different materials to generate a very, very nice effect for your element. Now, I'm going to show you the steps that I do and I follow to create my UB maps. And I'm going to use the blade right here to show you the techniques to create a proper UB map. It's actually very simple. I find that people sometimes they they think about this too much and they get themselves into a corner and they don't really know how to approach a UB map, especially for complex shapes like this one right here. So I follow, I think it's like three or four steps. Here's the first one, UV, and we're gonna delete the UVs. I don't wanna have any UV information on my object before I start creating my new UVs so that I can make sure that all of the things that I'm doing are completely clean. Second step, you're going to go to UV and you're going to do a camera based projection. Okay, just apply. And what this will do is it will take a picture of your object depending on where your camera is. And as you can see, this already looks like a good UV. We got a nice distribution here. And if we open our UV uh, element right here, you're going to see that it looks fine. However, the problem with this UV is that it's being mirrored through both sides. So if we paint something on this front part, we are going to have the same thing on this side reverse. So that's not what we want. I'm going to close the UV editor so that we're not distracted just yet. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a virtual scissors to cut the seams of this object and generate a nice UV map. So in the case of this blade right here, I always want to hide the seams in a place that's as easy as possible to well, hide the textures. You might have played a game or seen a movie. Well, movies, it's not very common, but in games, it's a little bit more common where you see like a wall or an object and you can see the seam where like the bricks don't match perfectly. That's because there might have been an issue on the UB department and the things are not lining up properly. And that can take you out of the immersion. So the tool that I like to use here inside of Maya to get my UVs is the 3D cut and sew UV tool, which is this one right here. However, for this tool to work, you need to make sure that you already have a base UV. That's why we did a camera based projection first. So we have something to work on top of. If you don't have UVs, then the 3D cut and sew UV tool won't work. Now, I wanted to use this one because it actually includes like the most common type of UVs that you will get. First, we got cylinders right here, and then we got flat areas like this plane right here. Now you can see that on the top here, this like a uh, little cone shape that we have right here, it's already like empty. So we actually, no, it's not empty. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a, a line going down the, the center uh, right there. There we go, that line. So I'm gonna show you how to UV map that as well. Let's start with this cylinder right here. I'm gonna split the cylinder from the rest of the blades. So I'm gonna cut at this back part of the blade and I'm gonna cut at this front part of the blade. The 3D Codons UV tool is very cool because you just double click and it will automatically create a line going through your clean edge loop. That's why modeling with clean edge loops is so important because if you don't have a proper model, then doing this becomes very, very tricky. Now that we have this, I'm going to cut the cap on the top part of the cylinder. So it's cap over here and then cap down here. And then I'm going to follow one of these lines that we created, one of these like side lines to divide the cylinder into a sort of like a can. I don't have a, I was drinking a Coca-Cola a couple of <laughs> hours ago, but if you take a look like at the Coca-Cola, the way that they cut the, 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 like the ticket or the, the, the branding is exactly in that similar way. So, so it goes around the cylinder and it has a cut going down at the back. So that's what we just did here with the cylinder. Then on this area right here, I'm going to double click so that we cut all along the edge of the ax. 
As you can see here, my axe has a little bit of thickness. This is a modeling tip. When doing weapons, a lot of people like to go for that super sharp, like triangular effect. I personally feel like that tends to create some issues on the shading department as well. And you can see here on the texture that even though I do have a little bit of a, of a bore there, like when you see it from afar, it reads perfectly, perfectly sharp. So that's one of one advice that I would give for modeling. So I'm going to do the same thing over that, like back here. I'm going to double click and just cut those two parts into two different positions. This technique, like cutting an object in half, is very useful when you have thin objects. So like a book, a notebook, uh, I don't know, like a table, like a door. Like it's usually ideal to have a cut going down the middle so you can have the front part of the element and the back part of the element. So that's step number two. First, we did a camera-based projection to get the, the proper UVs or a, a UV to start with. Then we use our 3D cut and, U, and sew UV tool to cut this element. Now, for this cone right here, cones work very similar to how cylinders work. So I like to cut a nice little like line right there. And then on the inside, as you can see right there, actually, it's already cut. It, 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 it's missing the faces on the back, so that's that's perfectly fine. And then just like cut one line right there. Or in this case, to be honest, since it's a cone, uh, just doing one line across, again, in a, in a sort of hidden part, and that should be more than enough. Once we have all of our cuts ready, we jump into step three of our UV process. We go to UV, UV Editor. We're going to select all of the UV shells with right click, and we're going to go to Modify and Unfold. The unfold tool is an amazing tool that we can use to, as you can see, cut all of the different elements in such a way that we've successfully divided all of the different parts. This is the cone. These are the, the little like uh, caps from the cylinder. And this is the ax. As you can see, I missed the spot on the ax. That's why we're getting this sort of like butterfly effect. So I'm going to go back to UV, 3D cut and sew UV tool. And we're going to cut at this line that we were missing right there. With that extra line uh, now uh, like applied, I should be able to, again, the shortcut is control U to unfold. And look at that. We get the front side of the axe and the back side of the axe. These are all of the UV islands that we're going to be using for our element. Now, finally, the last thing that we need to do is just grab all of this, guys. I'm going to go to modify, layout, and I'm going to lay them out by keeping the shell pre-rotation vertical in this case. And I'm going to preserve 3D ratios. I'm going to do apply. And as you can see, all of my UV maps have been properly arranged inside the one-to-one -one UV space. And these maps are ready to go into Substance Painter or Photoshop so that we can paint on top of them and create all of the textures that you see right here. So that exact same process that I just showed you is the process that I've used for all of the different parts of this axe. And that's the process that I use for all of my characters, weapons, vehicles, environments, like all of the things that we do. Yes, there are specific UV tricks and tips that you might be doing for specific things. Environment has some tricks for like trim sheets and tileable textures. Characters have specific tricks for subsurface scattering, things like that. So there are more advanced topics to be covered, but this is steps that I just show you, which is delete the UVs, create a planar mapping, do the cuts, do an unfold and do a layout, five steps. Those are the five steps that you need to create some very nice and basic UVs that you can use to texture your own creations. So that's it, my friends. That's it for uh, for this one. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. I just want to show you here the final like uh, render because I was really, really happy how this turned out. Look at that. Now, as you can see, the UVs here don't match with the original UVs. That's why we're seeing this distortion. Um, but if we were to... What's the word? If we were to like retexture it, we could get this very, very nice result. So if you want to learn more, we're going to have premium courses very, very soon. And the, the best way you can get the notification is by subscribing here to the YouTube channel. And of course, going to our Discord, Twitter, Reddit, like all of the social networks are available. We're also going to be having streams in Twitch. So if you want to follow and see in real time how I do weapons, characters and all this sort of stuff, make sure to check the links down here so that you can be on top of all of the things that we're going to be uh, sharing with you. Thank you very much for your support, my friends, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.